Good afternoon, everybody. A lot of you have been asking a lot of questions on what I know and how do I know and this, that, and the other. But we'll start out, we'll start uh, here in New Lebanon. We'll move to uh, the Wilmington area radar, then we'll go out globally, then we'll get to models. First, we'll start out with, this is current conditions right here in New Lebanon, in my backyard. we got 26 degrees with a wind speed of 4.5 mile an hour. Uh, well, I guess today we've had a peak of 90 or 9.2 mile an hour. It's out of the north northwest with that winds and that temperature It brings our wind chill down to about 21 degrees Not as bad as the the minus temperatures we have been seeing humidity down to 73 percent No rainfall barometric pressure is at 30.44 Everything else is looking great <clears throat> You can see right here Here's your forecast, not a whole lot going on, but the uh, this right here, that's the one we're going to talk about here right now, or right here in just a half a second. Uh, we're going to start now with a local look. Here is, here's Montgomery County. It's two different models, uh, two different programs, same thing. Uh, you can see we're out of the Wilmington right here, that little square, that's New Lebanon. Uh, nothing going on. You see this stuff here. It's just a little artifact going on. There was some report down uh, around the Lexington, Chillicothe, Columbus area of some grapple. That's uh, kind of like a sleet. <clears throat> um, real tiny, like a, a BB gun, BBs, you know, in that range. Uh, got them, went on, uh, but that's, that's done and gone. Those systems are around. Now we're going to come back over and look at, here we go. Here is a mosaic of all the, of all the uh, radars with what's going on. We'll back out one click. Uh, we'll add in temperatures. We can see exactly where the temperatures are. Um, Florida Georgia line in the mid 70s. The Tennessee line with uh, Georgia, Alabama, all of that are in the 30s. All of Tennessee is in the low 30s, upper 20s. Same with Kentucky. Get up around Cincinnati, 23, 24 on that. Now, our concern is always to the northwest and southwest. Maintaining them temperatures till you get up in the middle of Illinois. Now we're getting down into the teens and lower. Uh, you can see there... Um, Minneapolis up 8, 10, minus 8, minus 10. Uh, Davenport, Iowa, they're minus 2 to 1 degrees. See how that's moving around. <clears throat> what we're going to watch is all this moisture down here in the Gulf. There's going to be, like every winter, we get it out of the northwest. We get some uh, good old Canadian air come down here. Uh, this year is a little bit more uh, than normal. This is the... Uh, polar vortex that they've been talking about dropping temperatures down and when i mean dropping temperatures down in the uh like bismarck minus 18 uh, in that area minus 20 degrees it's sending down some cold air i'm gonna get rid of that clear it up so we can see what we're going to be doing is watching this front move over catching part of that polar vortex as well as, and you can see it right here, this is a moisture vapor uh, view, an IR view, and you can see how the moisture is coming up from the Gulf, coming up from the southwest. So in this general area right here around Arkansas, Missouri, tip of uh, Illinois, tip of Kentucky, down by around the Paducah area, Memphis, St. Louis, this right here is going to be the, uh, the conjunction. This is where everything's going to meet. <clears throat> We're going to switch over now to the models, okay? The models is not officially a prediction. A models is they use mathematical equations to figure out a probability. And what they do is they bring that probability up with weather patterns that's been going on for the last 20, 30, 50 years, however long they go back. I'm sure it's more than that. They pick up, you know, this is what happened on this day and this is what happened. So they, they take all of these different factors in with the barometric pressure, the uh, wind temperatures, the moisture, how it's moving. <clears throat> and they put all that into this really big smart machine, smarter than I am, by all stretches of the account. And uh, they, it puts together this, this probability, this model. 
you can see here we're starting out on February 12th, which is tomorrow, no, today. This is, uh, well, right now, this is the current condition. Uh, you see we got some snow over the Great Lakes going up. I believe that's right around Cooks, Michigan, where my dad lives, going up uh, to where my sister lives up here. I believe that's Escanaba. Um, they're getting some pretty decent snow. Then down here around West by God, Virginia, you can see they get some snow. Virginia getting some ice, some mixed precipitation. That's not really what I want to talk about. We're going to push this forward and you can watch the system developing. Here comes a little bit coming through. We're starting to get some up in northern Michigan, up around the Chicago area, Great Lakes, or Lake Michigan, not all of them. But, you, but watch right here. <clears throat> watch this area right here. When the system meets up with the moisture coming up through Texas and Oklahoma, watch what happens. Uh, get my mouse to... Where am I at? Here's Sunday. This is we're into Sunday already. Now, right there, Oklahoma, uh, Arkansas, Missouri, right here. That that cold has came come down, and here's your barometric pressure readings. <clears throat> uh, you can see where it's all meeting. Right here is the line. Uh, just it should be just just west of Little Rock there on uh, around Joplin. No, Joplin's up here. But whichever, Little Rock's right through here. Just west of there, you can see there's ice. So that's right where the freeze line's going to be, right in that general area. This is going to track southwest and come up right along the Kentucky border on up. Now let's watch this unfold. Okay, here, we'll stop it right here. We're now at 3 a.m. on Monday, which puts it at 10 p.m. Eastern time. This time here is called a Zulu time. It's uh, military, amateur radio, all that uses mil uh, Zulu time. That gives everybody a central point. So uh, this is 5 a.m. or I'm sorry, 10 p.m. Sunday night. So this is what's going on. We're already starting to get some flurries into our area. You can see it's already in Preble County. We're going to pop forward another click still okay now we're starting to get into Preble in Montgomery County we're starting to get some snowfall not heavy snowfall right now we're at 9 so it's 4 a.m. Monday morning your Monday morning commute might have some flurries and stuff into it I don't think it's going to be hazardous per se but always drive with care now we're going to slide on forward here we go next click Uh, 72 hours away now here's your freeze line it's going to throw more ice into the Kentucky area my buddy good friend of mine Austin lives right there right outside of Paducah in Caldwell County near Princeton they've been getting ice storms after it's training it's driving over each other like a train does these ice storms just one right after another going through Kentucky. So here's another train coming through of ice storms. Going to go through, might catch a little bit of uh, Louisville, uh, but down here, Kentucky, uh, what is this, uh, Lexington, and that and that way, Bowling Green, batting down the hatches, buddy. It's coming. But you can see now we're into some more moderate snow here in Montgomery County, into the New Lebanon area, the, the Greater Dayton area. And this is uh, 12Z, so this is... 7 a.m. Move it forward. Now here, we'll back up one frame. Okay, there is still some some decent amount of snow. Oh, this is the 7, let's see. Here's 15, so here's around noon. Snowfall stays the same. We're going to have continuous snow, so, but then... We got bands of moderate snow moving through at 18. So at noon, one o'clock, we're going to start getting some snow here in the Montgomery County area. You can see down here the mixture thing. And like I said, this is a probability. This is not a prediction. It's going to be moving through the area. I sleep and all that. It's just going to be a, an absolute mess. 
uh, getting close to the Cincinnati area, but we will move forward. Here we go. You can see some now some more heavier. This is some pretty heavy snowfall hitting Preble in Montgomery County. We're at Monday at 21 Zulu, so that's 4 or 5 p.m. in the evening. Now we're into still, still several hours later, still in heavy, heavy snowfall. And this is Tuesday, uh, zero, zero, Z. So that's going to be Monday evening around seven o'clock. We're still in that. This, this doesn't go any farther, but what I'm going to do real quick is let's go ahead and loop it. And you can watch how this is going to form and come right up out of the Southwest. So once this is all done, you can see there's still a lot more back here, all the way down into uh, the tip of uh, where Kentucky, Missouri, and Illinois is all still going to be tracking up towards us. So come uh, Tuesday night, when the heavy precipitation starts moving out, you're still going to have the pesky snow showers moving through, and it's going to be hard for them to keep up on the uh, <coughs> on the roads to keep them keep them clear. Monday morning commute, like I said, is going to be, I don't want to say safe because there will be some snow falling, some flurries falling. Just drive with due caution. Coming home Monday night, if you work first shift, coming home Monday night, that could be pretty treacherous. That's going to have hazardous road conditions. So drive, my dog is down here dropping his toy wanting me to play with him. The, uh, Rudy, hey, ignore. The, uh, Coming home Tuesday night, it's going to be hazardous. If you have to leave work, try to leave work as slow as you can. Take back roads. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of crashes during this. And like I said, you're in the middle of a long duration of heavy snow. Um, let's go over here to Jim's. Let's see what they're yeah. see what they're doing. Okay. We're going to zip through a lot of this stuff. We'll get on over here. Let's say this is another model. This is Saturday still. Sunday. Okay, this don't, this don't go as far. This is Sunday 12Z. So you can see it's forming and coming up. So this model is in agreement as well. Uh, let's check here out. Okay, this is our hit the wrong button. The, uh, that was showing temperatures, how the temperature is going to go. And that will help you understand what precipitation is going to fall. Uh, here we're over here on the global. Back up. You see right there, it's following it. We'll go back and forth over it. Right there, it's forming. Like I said, right here at the tip of Kentucky, uh, southwestern Kentucky, where all of that meets there, it's following that, and it's, it's going to mainly just come straight up and go through, heading towards Pittsburgh. See? Still a lot of heavy snowfall. Now with this one, this one goes out a little farther. This one is showing another system. Let's back up this, because this is worth mentioning. Right here. Next Thursday, 6 a.m., which is about 1 o'clock in the morning, so Wednesday night into Thursday, we're going to have some pretty rough stuff come through our area. This freezing rain line, that don't mean where it is. That is a probability where they think it's going to be. That can go north, give us more ice. That can go south, give us less snow. Uh, all of this is still just a probability. But see, there you go. On this one, Thursday 21Z, so that's around 4 o'clock, Thursday evening commute. It's showing we're on some ice. Some uh, mixed precipitation is going to fall. And this is 153 hours out. So the likelihood of this being 100% accurate is pretty low. All right. So <clears throat> we're going to go back here and we're going to we're going to talk about this mess. Okay. We're back in the NAM, the North American Mesoscale model. We're looking here. I've already told you how they come up with this. Now, a lot of the predictions and a lot of the stuff goes on a 10 to 1 ratio. 
for every one inch of rain precipitation that falls it freezes equals 10 inches of snow a 10 to 1 ratio what a lot of the people are trying to do right now a lot of the uh, systems they're trying to say it's like a 15 to 1 ratio uh, which if that's the case we could see significant 10 inches of snow I'm still thinking we're going to be in the 6 inch maybe 7 inch range right here in New Lebanon. Now, I'm not talking about Cincinnati, Wapakoneta, Columbus, Indiana. I don't care about them. I care about right here in Montgomery and Provo County. They're also saying the storm is a decades storm. This is storms like what we've seen in the 70s and 80s when we had significant snow, when we got a fish. Back in our day, you didn't get snow days unless it was four foot deep. And you got to walk to school uphill both ways. We all know that one. But back then, we got snowstorms. We didn't get an inch and have a snow day. We got a foot and had a snow day. So that's what they're comparing this to is back then in the 70s and 80s. So if you got to get out, do it this weekend. We all know come Sunday when they start screaming winter storm warning on the TV sets that everybody's going to be rushing out buying their milk, their eggs, their toilet paper, all of the stuff that they buy every year when they panic shop for storms. Beat the crowd. Get out Friday or Saturday and get it. If you ain't got to get out Monday, don't get out Monday or Tuesday. Monday morning's all right. Tuesday's bad, bad, bad. The If you're going to be driving in it, take the time. Make sure you clear off your side windows, your rear window, as well as your front window. <clears throat> if you can, clear off the hood of your vehicle because all that snow is just going to blow on your windshield. You need to maintain your visibility as much as possible, 360 degrees. You can drive as safe as you want. It's being able to dodge the other idiots on the road that you need to, to keep in mind. So with that, I'm going to leave you guys on this picture. It's going to get rough come Monday and Tuesday. The uh, more Monday night and Tuesday is going to be the harshest. So Monday evenings commute and Sunday morning, or I'm sorry, Tuesday mornings commute is going to be capitalized, underlined, hazardous commute. Please drive carefully. If I see anything more that's noteworthy, I will make sure to uh, hop on here. Uh, like I said, this is strictly my opinion. I am not a meteorologist. I don't know squat compared to a real meteorologist, but this is the knowledge that I do have. This is what I am seeing. And I figured I'd share this and pass this on to you guys. So everybody have a wonderful weekend, and uh, hopefully this will die out and we'll only get an inch. Unfortunately, I think I'm wrong on that statement.